<clears throat> all right, first and foremost, I'm going to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to the elders of GMS, right? Today's lesson, I want to go into false accusers, man, all right? Because in this, uh, in this, um, in this ministry, in this walk, you're going to go through many trials and tribulations, man. And we often see it through our forefathers of old. You know, really, like when you read the scriptures, you'll see that, you know, the scriptures really touch on everything, man. You know, uh, many different, you know, situations and scenarios, right? It is really to, you know, instruct you on really in all ways of life and the Heavenly Father. The Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has given us examples through our ancient forefathers, you know, and, you know, many times so that when we go through something, we can go back and read these scriptures and gain comfort and how and see how our forefathers overcame and prevailed, right? Like it says in Romans, the 15th chapter, the fourth verse. But I want to get into the fact that how Joseph was falsely accused, man. All right, because, you know, me and myself, I'm going through a certain situation right now, you know, at the job. And it seemingly just came out of nowhere, man. You know, when I come to work, I do everything I'm supposed to. Uh, I come in, uh, I work I work as hard, you know, as I'm supposed to, you know, within some reason, you know, downtime or whatever. And, you know, uh, they trying to accuse me uh, of, of taking something, man. You know, uh, and I'm like, bro, like this is this is this is this is crazy. And, you know, things like this, uh, you know, um, I see that uh, is a trial of your faith, man. You know, because this has happened to our forefathers before, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and read this, right? So Genesis chapter 39 and verse 4. And Joseph found grace, right? So this is when Joseph, he he went into Egypt. He was sold into Egypt and, and you know, in bondage, right? And, you know, he came into a, a what is it? A captain of a, a captain of the girl, uh, captain of the guard and officer of Pharaoh in Egypt, right? And he was a servant in his house, right? So I'm going to read verse 4. It says, and Joseph found grace in his sight and served him. And he made him overseer of his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand because ultimately Joseph had an excellent spirit within him. Right. So, you know, of course, the officer uh, of the, the captain of the guard perceived that in Joseph, that he was a studied man. Right. Because when you read the story of Joseph, when he was younger, his father groomed him up, you know, taught him many things. Right. You know, so, of course, you know, Joseph wasn't just like some regular peasant. Right. He had greatness within him. Of course, and, you know, he had the uh, the Dash in him. Right. So when 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 the captain of the guard seen that. You know, he moved them up, right? And put more responsibility on them, right? So Genesis 39, I'm going to skip down to verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that the master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she and she said, lie with me, right? So the point is, Joseph, you know, uh, uh, you know, he was moving, you know, probably a good looking brother, right? So the captain of the guard that put Joseph in authority in his house, his wife was looking upon Joseph. And she captured, you know, Joseph captured her eye, you know? To the point where she wanted him and she wanted to commit adultery. But what did Joseph do as a righteous man? Right. Verse eight says, but he he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master, what if not? What is me with me in the house? And he have committed all that he hath into my hand. Right. So the point is, I'm going to read, I'm going to read verse nine. There was none greater in this house than I. Right. Neither. It's like there is uh, <clears throat> there is none greater in this house than I. Neither have he kept anything back. From me, but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against my power, right? Yeah, so the point is, it's sinning against your power, right? So what did Joseph do as a man of integrity, as a man of, uh, 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 of you know, uh, as a man of the heavenly father? What did he do, right? He said, no, man, I can't do that. I can't get down with that. Verse 10, and it came to pass, and she spake Joseph day by day, and he uh, and he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her, right? So she she kept pursuing, she kept pursuing. She kept feeling rejected. And, and, and women know how it is when they feel rejected. You know, some, some women can get real sinister, right? Verse 11, it says, and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. So he doing his daily routine. And there was none of the men, uh, so like it, and there was none of the men of the house there within. She probably sent them away. Who knows? We're probably waiting for the perfect opportunity. Verse 12, and it says, and she called him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got got uh, uh, and got him out. Basically, he, 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 he ran up out of there to the point where he's like, no, nah, man, get up out of there. You know, just in case anybody try to pop up and they see me, see you grabbing him on garment. And he accidentally left his garment behind. Right. And what actually happened. Right. So. So, you know, um, I can read further down, but basically she falsely accused Joseph and said that he raped her. Right. So you see, this is a this is a prime example uh, 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 of false, false false accusations, man. 
right? And this happens sometimes, you know, and, and, and you know, in this walk, you have this what? With brethren, you know, well, not even brethren, you know, false brethren, you know, people accusing you, falsely accusing you, uh, you know, it happens in the world. And you see how this happened with the prophets of old, man. And this is why, and what happened with Joseph, you know, after this, he was sent into the prison, right? Because I'm not going to read the whole story of Joseph. You know, there's a lot of chapters. Joseph went into the prison. And then ultimately after that, you know, he was risen up out of that prison, you know, giving, giving, giving good authority in that prison. And after that, he got raised up to be a, a second in command in Egypt, man. Right. And then that was how the heavenly father had used, you know, Joseph to bring the rest of, you know, uh, uh, Yashra Allah into the land, you know, uh, of Egypt. And that's how we got in there. Right. And he made sure we was fed through the famine and whatnot. Right. That was brought upon Egypt because it was seven years of plenty. It's seven years of famine. Right. But you see how when, when when you going through something, it's really best to look back on the prophet prophets of old and, and take comfort in these things, man. Right. Because that's instantly what I thought about, man. Like, you know, afterwards, you know, and I'm like, I'm sitting there in the office. I'm like, damn, for real. But it's like, but I do everything I'm supposed to do. And it's like I just couldn't wrap my head around. I come I come to work. I don't give nobody no problems. I, I do what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I make sure I'm humble with it. You know, even if it's some bullshit that you're telling me to do, I make sure I just get it done because I need my check. And, and, and I get the hell up out of there, man. Every day, same thing. So that way I can go do the work, go do the gym. You know what I mean? Do my, do my little daily routines. And that's it, man. Same thing every day, pretty much. Same thing every day. But you, you see how this, the, 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 you know, and this is how I know this is just a trial of my faith and, and, and brothers and sisters, you know, I'm, 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 I'm speaking in y'all because y'all going to go through some things, man. Right. And just preparing you don't, don't try not to break, man. Right. Don't break. Trust in the heavenly father. Romans 15 and four says whatsoever things were written or four time were written for our learning that we through patience of and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So when we read these things as our forefather, Joseph, he, you know, it was to put him in a better situation. A lot of times when you go through things, it's, it's the trial of your faith so that way the Heavenly Father can tweak something in you, correct something in you, right? And then ultimately try your faith because he's proven us and then put us in a better situation, right? Or lift up, lift up, uh, lift us up, up out of that so we can have increased faith by seeing how he delivered us from that 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 that, situ that situation where it's low, like back in the world, you probably would have thought like, there's no way I can get out of this, Right? Because ultimately, we're going to need faith. We're going to need patience that the Heavenly Father is going to, you know, uh, uh, deliver us, man. Right? Where is that at? Uh, shoot. Yeah, First James chapter, uh, just like it. James chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Right? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire once and nothing. So meaning that, Right? You got to You got to You got to let your, the trial of your faith, which is brought upon you by that furnace of adversity, different things that you go through. Right. Have a perfect work, run its course so that way you can learn what you need to learn through that through, through that experience. And then once you learn what you need to learn and the heavenly father sees that you didn't fold, he'll bring you up out of it. That's how it goes. Right. And then ultimately it's the same thing that uh, or, 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 or whatever the heavenly father wants to accomplish through you going through that. Once that's accomplished, then he brings you up out of that. That's the same thing he did with Joseph, right? James chapter uh, uh, 1 and verse 2, I'm going to read it in the NLT. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For, when you, so like you, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So now my faith, your faith has a chance to grow now. Because you're brought in a situation where you know, as long as you do good and, and, and me and my conscience, I know damn well I ain't do nothing wrong. So I know I'm going to be cool. You know what I'm saying? I know everything is going to be fine. And it's just like, it just be going through it, man. You know what I mean? So brothers, I'm using this as an example so that way brothers can learn from my experience. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, and even if it ain't the same situation, you can apply it to something else that, that they may be troubling or trying you. Or, or, or really trying your faith right now. It's an opportunity for your faith to grow because that's really what this thing is about. Continuing to grow and grow it more and more in the spirit, right? Ultimately, so that when that, when that time of Jacob's trouble comes, right? You know, we've been proven worthy and that heavenly father has great mercy upon us. And, you know, we have faith in him and, and he delivers us, man, right? Because ultimately you need to believe when that time comes, right? Because if you don't believe what's going to happen, right? When that time comes, right, which we see is, is fastly approaching. So I racked up to two and verse uh, verse 13. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, meaning you, you, you're not believing. Right. It says, for he believeth not 
Therefore, shall he not be defended? So the point is, you need to have your faith built up now. You need to have that faith. So when that when that when that time comes, you're built up and you're not faint hearted in those times. And that way, the heavenly fathers are like, he's not like, all right, well, you don't you don't got faith. All right, well, then I'm not going to deliver you because that's really what's going to happen to some people, man. Right. So we got to So we got to continue to go through things. And, you know, I preach about all this. I preach about this all the time. And, you know, of course, I know the Heavenly Father going to bring me through it. You know what I'm saying? I can't be preaching to our, our brothers and sisters about going through it and standing tall. And the Heavenly Father ain't had me going through nothing. So, I, you know, I got to take this on the chin, man. You know, and, um, you know, I don't want to ride this eye. You know, he delivered me swiftly up out of this, man. You know, and um, this is just a trial of, uh, you know, of my faith. You know, whatever brothers and sisters, whatever y'all going through or, you know, even if ain't nothing, you know, popping right now. You know, you know, be, uh, but I see that it's like a revolving door until we get up out of here. Right. You'll go through a particular situation and get delivered. It'll be some uh, some 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 peace period for a little while until that revolving door goes back around and then something else will come. And then, you know, it, it, but it's for continual growth. Right. It's, it's as the fig tree that the um, when, when somebody has like a, a farmer has a fig tree, I forget where the scripture is at. But basically, when you see that, when he sees that that fig tree is bringing forth fruit, he purges it, meaning, you know, he's shaking, you know, he, uh, uh, he purges the, the, the tree. I, I believe that's like, you know, taking the fruit off and everything like that. So that way more fruit can actually grow. Right. Because if you leave that fruit on there, all right, what's the profit? Eventually, you know, if it's staying on there, it ain't going, you know, it's just going to go bad. Right. So you got to continue to have it growing more and more fruit. And it's the same thing with the Heavenly Father that he does with us. Right. He purges us. So that way we make it. Uh, so we make more. And how does he purge us? Right. How does he purge us means like, how does he clean? How does he clean us? Right. He, he, he puts us through the fire. Fire is a cleansing agent. And what is the fire that we go through? The furnace of adversity. Right. So we have to go through adversity for us to get, you know, constantly, you know, uh, uh, strengthened in the spirit more and more. This is what happens. This is the battle. This is the trying of the, this is why it's called the fight, uh, uh, the, uh, the good fight of faith, man. Right. First Timothy chapter six and verse 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Right. This is what happens. This is why it's called a fight, because there is a, 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 a there are there are forces that are averse to us, you know, uh, staying faithful in this ministry, man. As you see with uh, Job and Job, the first chapter with Satan trying Job, man. Right. Get, receiving permission from the heavenly father, man, to try it so that way he can prove us, man. So this is this is this is what we got to go through. And, it, you know, what I mean, sometimes it's like, damn, man, you know, because it leave it up to us. You know, we'll have it to where we don't go through anything. Right. So the Heavenly Father, he, he, he turns it up on us, man. If he loves you. Right. That's called the chastisement uh, of the Heavenly Father. And it says despise not the chastening of Ha'adawan, man. So we can't despise the chastening of the Heavenly Father. Right. Because Hebrews 12 and verse uh, verse five, it says, and, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of Ha'adawan, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Right. So don't give up. Verse six, it says, for whom Ha'adawan loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom whom he receiveth. So that means that the heavenly father is receiving you, man. When you constantly going through these trials and tribulations and you're living a righteous lifestyle. Now, if you're getting fucked over, right, and you're doing nothing but wickedness, that's just judgment. But say you live in a righteous lifestyle, you ain't hurting nobody, you ain't harming nobody, you're trying to help people, you're trying to do right by the Heavenly Father, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to make sure that your life, you know, exemplifies that of a man and a Heavenly Father, then and you receive some type of some some type of BS that comes your way, then understand that that's chastisement, man, right? And you can know that by the fact that what you're putting in, right? If you know you're doing good, you're going to get good too. Right. But ultimately, it ain't going to be peaches and creams in this ministry because you read in Sirach, the second chapter that what? When thou comest to serve her out of one, prepare thy soul for temptation, man. So this thing, this thing has to come. And this is the reason why when I give these exhortations, I'm able to give these exhortations because a brother be going through shit sometimes, man. Right. And and and, and when the Heavenly Father brings me about it, I'm telling you, it builds my faith. Right. And then I'm able, therefore, to help strengthen you, Akiam and Akwaf, man. Right. So this is, this is, you know, uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know, ultimately when, when going through these things and, and, and you live in a righteous life, man, knowing that you ain't doing no dirt. Right. Because ultimately all things work together for the good of them that uh, that love that and love and fear the heavenly father. Like it says in Romans, the eighth chapter. Right. So I'm going to read on. It says verse six, uh, verse seven. It says, if you endure chastening, God, the heavenly father dealeth with you as with sons for what son is whom 
is he whom the father chasteneth not, right? It says, but if ye be without chastisement, so if you're not getting chastised, right, never at all, it says, we're of all our partakers. So we all are partakers. This is why I can say confidently, like, brothers and sisters be going through shit, man, right? So it says, we're all our partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons, right? So that's the point, man. And chastisement can come in many different forms. It can come in relationships. It can come in, you know, uh, finance. It can come in so many different things, right? Whatever, you know, uh, particularly your particular situation is that may affect you, you know? So, you know what I mean? It, it's But we have to always understand that what, man? Let me get this, uh, and I'm probably end off on this, you know, the spirit allows. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, I just referenced it. Uh, matter of fact, let me see verse 18 It says Romans 8 and 18 It says for I've reckoned that the sufferings of this present time Are not worthy to be compared with the glory Which shall be revealed in us So it's not even worthy to be compared with Whatever shit you're going through now It's not worthy to be compared with the things that you're going to receive As long as you endure unto the end Right, so we have to remember that And, and, and I'm not, this is why I always say I'm not saying these things Just, you know, uh, just to say them I, I gotta apply them to my life as well you see what I'm saying? So, you know, take confidence at, at the fact that, you know, when brothers and sisters going through stuff, it's other brothers going through things, too, and they holding it down. So you got to be like, you know what? You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to hold it down, too. You know what I'm saying? And this applied to myself as well, man. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that thing, all things work together for the good of them that love the Heavenly Father to them who are called according to his purpose. Right. So if you call according to his purpose, man. All things work together for the good of them that love the Heavenly Father, man. So understand that. Take that in. Believe that. You feel me? So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end off there. I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to all you sincere-hearted true believers, man.